The stock market is booming. Dump all of your real assets and buy stocks and bonds. Janet Yellen has saved the day by informing the mainstream media that the economy is too weak to increase interest rates. That's great news. And now back to reality. Stock buybacks, low or negative interest rates, Chinese buyers of real estate and land, government subsidies, and central bank easing have pushed up all asset classes to some degree. This has caused the fundamentals to be thrown out the window. You can believe either one, but you came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we'll talk about this false stock market boom. Let's begin with this article out of CNBC. We're looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average seeing its biggest quarterly comeback since 1933. Huge news right here as we see the stock market climbing back from its losses. There's information in the article if you'd like to see it, but I'll just cover a couple points. The S&P and the Dow both rose for the second straight quarter, finishing 0.8 and 1.5% higher, respectively. And there's more details here, but I just want to note early volatility drove investors to gold and the uh, metal posted its best quarter in about 30 years. Gold prices rose 16.5% in the first quarter. Obviously, those who jumped on this bandwagon at this point from its low point made considerable gains in that short period of time. Those who have purchased beforehand have made their money back to some degree. Now, what this shows us is that that when there is concern that investors will go to gold that hasn't changed but there is a lot of purchases being done in the paper gold which i don't agree with at all further down in the article it talks about all the different issues that have happened here and you're looking at crude oil rising 3.5 percent is first positive quarter in the last three dollar index slipped four percent financials and healthcare had their worst quarter since the financial crisis and that's important to note because whenever you see something since the financial crisis you know and have to connect that in with everything else along the line what does it mean if financials are having their worst quarter since the financial crisis? You know, you have to piece that together. You can't just look at it as one individual stock, the way that they do this in the mainstream media. Utilities had their best first quarter on record. Now, obviously, with oil, for example, not doing well at all for quite some time, and then being able to come back from such a low point. That's what you need to understand. Telecom did well. Verizon and Caterpillar did well. Goldman Sachs and Boeing did not do well. And it goes on. Now, this is just some basic info. But, you know, when you're looking at individual stocks, when you're looking at PE ratios, when you're looking at things in such a micro level, you're never going to see the big picture. And I guess that's the point of looking at all the micro details. But that's the way that you'll see stock analysts, advisors, and everyone else. They look at it so with such a narrow-minded view, but they believe that that's the best way to do it. And this is obviously the complete opposite of the way that I look at it. What about this? Walmart's first ever revenue drop end of an era for the first time giant retailers revenue shrank from the year before its shares have fallen bef uh, below the retail competitors in the broader market has the company reached its growth limit there's more in the article but i want to note the fact that a company like walmart generally does well when times are tough because people go out and they're looking for more savings and a company like walmart likes to cut costs and they can have that sort of no frills type of environment where they can pass the savings on to the people. They buy in massive quantities so they can get a better deal. 
And this doesn't seem to be helping them in this case. They tried opening more stores, they tried renovating old stores, and it didn't seem to work because they had to shut down a lot of stores in different areas. So this is what we have seen obviously not doing well for a company like Walmart. Typically, if you've seen during the last, you know, the financial crisis, towards the end of the last leg of the boom, we saw Walmart doing well and Costco, I believe, as well. And this didn't pan out this time, at least in this case. In my book, I talked about what happens when companies don't do well and obviously they begin cuts. The banks have gambled with people's money and now they are forced to keep their profits up by cutting back on employees, not their gambling. And this is what happens in the financial crisis and uh, financial companies in particular. As you see them giving their CEOs bigger and bigger and bigger bonuses and bigger salaries, all the while cutting back on their employees. Look at this, China, we've been talking about them recently, tightening its grip on cross-border e-commerce, imposing a new tax system on overseas purchases that form a growing business catering to Chinese consumers with the appetite for foreign goods. So they're manipulating their currency quite a bit recently, and they're doing this, they're really having a big uh, impact on what happens, not just with the currency, but with the monetary system, they're affecting the fiscal policy as well. They are really trying to change things at this time. The changes announced by the finance ministry last week include raising the so-called parcel tax that is currently imposed on uh, foreign retail products that e-commerce firms ship into China. So look for more big changes coming out of China. And then, of course, Venezuela, I cover this as often as possible. Over the past three years, Venezuelans have seen shortages, short, shortages of food, water, toilet paper, and medicine. In some areas of the country, electricity has been curtailed. Now, the lights may go out in the nation's capital. And they talked about not having enough rain, and that could be r- causing rolling blackouts in Venezuela's largest city by the end of April. And imagine this, their economy contracted by 10%. What would happen if the GDP of any of the major nations of this world contracted by 10% in a relatively short period of time? This would be a massive crisis. And it very well could happen in the country that you live in. Don't think it has to happen in a country like Venezuela. Imagine the effect of this, what this would mean to businesses and everything else as everything's contracting coming down you will see a ripple effect occurring i assure you now what would we do if there was a crisis how would we build ourselves out of it as was done in previous crises particularly decades and decades ago first time in human history people 65 and older will outnumber children under five you have a very big population problem that is going on right now. Demographics are not looking good for the future. And it's particularly evident in Europe, as well as Japan, and other areas where simply there's not enough newcomers in as many as the old timers. Basically, the crisis financially is obvious that the young people have to pay for the old people, but there's less old people paying into the system and that's why the social security and other type of social assistance those type of benefits are redlining or have gone completely bankrupt and it doesn't look good for the future of these in these countries like japan and others as well where they're simply digging into the future in order to pay off the present and then this is you know I just really have to show this. This was an article that I found talking about Al Sharpton saying that, you know, as soon as Obama's presidency is over, that, you know, this is going to be it. That's it for Al Sharpton. You know, he did what he could while Obama was president, but that's it. It's all over. And I just, you know, what do I say about Al Sharpton except for this? Report, Al Sharpton was an FBI informant 
on the mob. And, of course, he says that I wasn't an FBI informant. I was simply cooperating. That's his rebuttal. I wasn't an informant. I was cooperating. No. You were an informant. Cooperating is an informant. And I'm sure you were getting paid quite well, too. The media likes to spin every little bit of information, and I, for one, am not going to take it. That's it for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber already, you definitely positively need to be a subscriber. Hit the button and you will get videos approximately every single day. And they're this type of information, financial, political. Occasionally, you'll see some health type videos talking about genetically modified food and other things. But obviously, you want to focus into the financials, showing you the charts, the technical analysis, the geopolitical analysis. And I'd ask you to become a subscriber on here, and you will definitely not be disappointed. I have the best subscribers in all of YouTube, and that group is growing, I assure you. The subscribers on here, if you just look at the thumbs up ratio, you'll know that this group of people is undoubtedly the best. So if you're not one of them already, join the Money GPS right here. Last but not least, if you found the video informative, I know you'll find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. You want to take a look through it, just head over to Amazon. They have a look inside feature, which will allow you to flip through the pages of the book and see if you like it. Take care.